So the transfer portal window is closed. If you're not already in, you're gonna have to wait. You don't have to have landed at your new program, but you have to at least be in the portal. So now we can, we can breathe a sigh of relief for just a second. The dust is settling, we look around. Do you see what Ole Miss has done? Who's starting quarterback at Ole Miss? No one knows. It's unknowable at this point. Jackson Dart's there, but he's not a transfer, at least this cycle. You know he's there. Walker Howard's there now. Thought there was some legitimate Florida traction there. Turns out Walker Howard, former four-star player last cycle, Louisiana product, was at LSU. He transfers to Ole Miss. So, you know, some of the... Some of the more traditionalist fans in our sport just kind of recoil at the idea of players transferring within a conference, much less within a division. And honestly, I feel you, but it is what it is. I just got to ride the wave right now. But I, I, I share your emotion on that. Nevertheless, free country, it is Walker Howard's constitutional right to transfer within division if he wants to, and he did. And that's not it. That's not it. Because today we get word, Spencer Sanders. Remember Spencer Sanders? He's been missing. Spencer Sanders went in the portal, been on the back of milk cartons for the better part of two months or thereabouts. No longer. Because he's also landed at Ole Miss. And for those of you who are keeping score at home, we have the crown jewel of the last class for LSU at quarterback. Well, he's at Ole Miss now. Jackson Dart started for Ole Miss last year. He's there. Spencer Sanders has started since like 1997 at quarterback for Oklahoma State. He's there. And they can only put one of them on the field at a time. So if you're looking for an early storyline to watch in spring practice and you're not already an Ole Miss fan, check out Oxford. And I don't, I don't know that there's any world where I think all three of those guys stay there post-spring, and I'm just putting two and two together. This is not information or intel. I, these are three guys who fancy themselves a starting quarterback. That's why they transferred to begin with. So if you think all of them are going to exit spring and stay there, I would, I would be surprised at that. Let me put it that way. Now, the other thing you need to know is this makes back-to-back -to -back top 15 transfer portal classes for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. And I know that... I was listening to Ben Mintz talk today, and he was jacked, and he was outdoors, and, and, and he was feeling it because the news had just come down, and he was saying, hey, the collective's doing what the collective needs to do at Ole Miss, and he's right. He's right. They're picking their spots, and I think you'll come to realize over the next few cycles that some programs have the science of NIL figure it out a little bit more than others. And by science, I mean proper attribution of roster value on a player, not brand value. Brand value and roster value, as I have explained to you before, are two different compartments within the broader scope of NIL. Roster value, you should essentially interpret to mean, how much is that player actually worth to your football team? Brand value is how much Aflac will pay me. Uh, to, to be an ambassador while I'm playing for your program. That's the more classical NIL approach. But roster value, how much should we actually be paying to a kid? Now, of course, here's, here's the legalese. Programs don't pay football players to play football for them. That's illegal. That doesn't happen. Pay to play is not happening. Have I, have I recited it like the lawyers told me I'm supposed to recite it? Okay, now that we got that out of the way, and the high-level mustaches, the high-level legal teams out of the room, let's talk real talk again. They know what they're doing at Ole Miss. They don't have the deepest purse, but they know what they're doing, and they solidified, probably more so than just about anyone else out there, they solidified their quarterback room because they've got the best thing you could possibly have, competition with multiple quality participants at the most important position on your football team. So good for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. Now let's see what spring teaches us about that room. A.D. Mitchell is in the transfer portal. Big receiver prospect. A big play resume. He has scored a touchdown in every college football playoff game they've played in since he's been on campus, which is four of them. And he was hurt most of this year. And a lot of us were just counting down the days on if he's able to return this year for Georgia. And he was. And Ohio State found out. And then, well, like, I scored a touchdown for Georgia against TCU, but he did too. So he's a really good player. He's from Texas. 
until I hear otherwise, I'm just going to expect that he lands at Texas. I, I was at Georgia spring game two years ago. He was the player of the game for them in the spring game. The funny thing about it is Ajay Hall was the player of the spring game for Alabama, and he's nowhere to be found in Tuscaloosa. He's long since gone. So that doesn't always tell you the whole story. But A.D. Mitchell, that was a sign of things to come. And I heard from several of our Georgia fans, and they had a bunch of guys portal out of Athens last year. They will every year. That's just the nature of being as loaded as they are. But some of you kind of said the same thing. You said, this one hurts a little bit more. Because this isn't a guy that had, you know, 248 receiving yards and mop-up duty. This is a guy who is synonymous with some of the biggest moments in the history of this program. Georgia doesn't have 14 or 15 national titles up there. They got four of them, and he's been a key contributor on half of those. He's the guy who caught that eventual game-winning touchdown against Bama last year. He's the guy who caught that go-ahead touchdown against Ohio State this year. And he's moving on. And I don't necessarily think it's a, it's a problem or it's a sign that there's a big issue. I think probably he wanted a change of scenery. There are personal reasons here uh, that aren't necessarily related to any kind of toxicity at Georgia or anything like that. Uh, but Texas is my guess. That's my guess. And it's because, obviously, he has family in Texas. If the Longhorns get A.D. Mitchell, that will be this cycle's version of them getting Isaiah Nayer, the kid they got from Wyoming that I thought was going to pop off the screen, and then he got hurt in fall camp. Well, let's hope A.D. Mitchell doesn't get hurt. Because if he doesn't, I fully believe he can be a 1,000-plus yard receiver for Texas, if he goes there. I think he can be a 1,000-yard kid wherever he goes. Let me put it that way. Speaking of the receiver position... The Fighting Jessies have made moves at Penn State. One big question, if you ask Penn State fans about 2023, wasn't quarterback. In fact, it wasn't pretty much any other position on the field. They feel good elsewhere. It was wide receiver. Parker Washington, he's gone. Mitchell Tinsley, they got him out of the portal last year. He's gone. What are we going to do at receiver? Well, James Franklin saw that too, apparently. And so they've, they've picked their spots. And they kind of laid in the weeds, and all of a sudden, Penn State's made some moves at receiver, too. They got Dante Cephas. That was the number 28 overall player in the portal. He's out of Kent State. More on the Golden Flashes in just a second. And uh, big numbers from 2021. 82 receptions, over 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. And they got Malik McClain to go along with him. And you'll probably notice when you watch Penn State this fall, this is not a bunch of guys who are cut from the same cloth. I mean, McLean's 6'4", 200, devastating blocker. You watch some of his highlight film, and he doesn't touch the ball, and you're saying, why is this play on Malik McLean's highlight film? Well, it's because he stock-blocked a defender halfway into the next county. That's why. And so they got some burners. They already had some there. But they got some burners. They got some route runners and underneath guys. They got some, some physical street-fighting kind of guys like Malik McLean. They did a really good job here. I think it's a really, really versatile, good mixture in the receiver room. I'm telling you, Penn State's a playoff team, playoff caliber team. Not, I'm not making my predictions in January. Did, here's something that happens. Look how close the blue pin is to matching the Penn State. Anyway, when I mention Penn State, there is a contingent of folks out there who say, oh, we do this every year with Penn State. Well, no, we don't. Because... The next time I predict Penn State to make the playoffs on this show will be the first time I've ever predicted Penn State to make the playoff. So if we get to August and I pick that team to go to the playoff, it's not, oh, we're doing it with Penn State again. I don't care what anyone else has done because, quite frankly, I don't really listen to any other shows. I know what we haven't done. And what I haven't done has ever been this all-in on Penn State. And I'm sure, I'm sure that coaching staff loves praise being heaped on a team in January that hasn't even broken spring camp, much less fall camp. You're welcome, guys. That's what we're here for. Uh, thank you, Jesse. Okay, and also, this is a sad, sad situation. You cannot have a lot of programs out there loading up on players without someone getting victimized. And frankly, I don't know if there's anyone left at Kent State. Chris Hummer wrote an article earlier today. It's still over on 247sports.com if you want to if you want to read the horror in print form, winners and losers in the portal. <clears throat> Let me tell you what a loser in the portal looks like. First off, you lose your head coach. Sean Lewis went to Colorado with Deion Sanders to be the OC out there. That was the beginning. Then they lost their starting quarterback to UCLA. 
They lost their starting running back to Ball State. They lost their top three receivers to Penn State, West Virginia, and North Carolina. Both their starting offensive tackles went to Colorado and UCF. Oh, and their top corner went to West Virginia. What? So, hey, three cheers for parity in college football as long as you're an upper-tier Power 5 school, right? I love I love the gatekeepers of this sport and how much they care about equality throughout. Uh, Kent State will struggle to field a competitive team in the year of our Lord 2023, and it's because their players all left and their coach left. And as a result, you're gonna have you're gonna have some players wearing the Kent State uniform. I don't necessarily know what standard they'll be up to, but there you go. The seedy underbelly of the transfer portal rears its ugly head again this time at Kent State, and also. I thought I was done, but I I did want to remind you, if you're just coming back to the table and you haven't been following the portal, well, here's what it looks like right now. Transfer portal rankings. You can see these on 247sports.com. LSU, number one in the country. Florida State's up there. We've talked about them a lot. Frankly, we probably haven't talked about Auburn enough. They're sitting at number three. My apologies. Uh, Colorado, we just discussed moments ago. And then there's USC at five. Do you notice the number six team? If you're listening on podcast. Let me tell you 7 through 10. UCLA, Wisconsin, Michigan, Oklahoma. There's one team I left out. Who do you think, whomst do you think would be that mysterious question mark brand at number 6? And before I tell you who it is, 49 of the top 50 classes in the transfer portal rankings are Power 5 schools. However, number 6, SMU, is the one exception. SMU, out of the top 50 The only non-P5 school in the transfer portal rankings. And there they go. This is what... That's what a a pony sounds like. Good for SMU. Oh, that is difficult to do. We just saw the opposite side of that coin when a non-Power 5 gets rated. Well, that's what happens when one fattens up. They end up in the top 10 amongst some really, really big brand names. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me, that's how we keep this entire thing free.